What's going on guys? Back again with another video where I answer your questions. Uh, today I got a interesting topic that a lot of you have been asking about my MPH program, kind of why I did it and all that kind of jazz. What I was just saying, like I've been getting a lot of questions about this. I I've, answered, I've tried to keep up and actually answer the, the questions. Most of them have, have actually come through as direct messages, so you guys probably don't see them out there. I guess this is, has been a pretty hot topic, and a lot of you guys are asking from many different perspectives. Uh, one perspective is like you guys are in pharmacy school, and your pharmacy school offers a dual degree in some type of master's program, MHA, MBA, MPH, MHI, whatever it may be. You're like, should I do it? Should I not? And another perspective you guys are asking as like practicing pharmacists, like, should I pursue a MPH or master's, whatever it may be, um, after pharmacy school? So um, I'll start with some of the questions. I couldn't find all the questions together, and I, I guess I, uh, I was too lazy to look for them. But I've answered most of your questions, I believe. Uh, there was a question that actually Esan, uh, Esan asked me, and I thought he did a good, great way of like kind of framing all the different perspectives here. So, Esan, he's a first year student. Uh, I'll read his question. He says, I watch all your videos and I, in my opinion, they are really amazing and inspiring. I have a question about double majoring. I start pharmacy school next week and my school is offering double majors both in PharmD MBA and PharmD MPH. I really like both MBA and MPH, and this makes it harder for me to make my final decision about applying to one of these programs. Since you're doing your MPH right now, and from your experience, can you please give some advice about which one I should choose and which one can give me more opportunities to work in the clinical field in the future? Thank you again for your great videos. They are super, super helpful. So Esan, uh, thank you for your support. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Um, it always means a lot to me when you know you guys these these videos are beneficial to you guys. So let's see. I'll I'll comment on a couple things. So the first thing I'll say is I technically haven't started. It is like more of a disclaimer. I technically haven't started on my MPH program yet. I know I said I did in some of the previous videos, but I actually pushed it back. So my start date now is January 2018. The reason why I'm saying that is because. I have reasons why I want to pursue MPH, but I can't tell you if the uh, getting the MPH leads to anywhere. You know, I have ideas of what I think it leads to, but I can't, with concrete uh, experience, say yes, I got my MPH, and because of that, I it, I got X, Y, and Z. So that's just the disclaimer. The other thing is, you said, um, you, you know, you like MBA and MPH, and you're trying to figure out what, which dual program to pursue. At UF, which is the farm school I went to, also had a lot of dual degrees, and I looked at a couple. I was very interested in MBA, uh, and MHA, and MPH, and I'll tell you a couple of ideas uh, or comments and thoughts that I have about each one of them, and why I ultimately chose MPH. Uh, you were interested in MBA. so. The first thing is like with MBA, I always I kind of think of that as like the general business um, degree, I mean, that's what it stands for, right? So like I think it's it's very broad. It teaches you a lot of great high level management type skills. At least that's what I think. I, I didn't research too much into it, but management type skills. You want to be a leader in the pharmacy workforce. You're gonna uh, start your own company, you're gonna uh, manage people, a lot of different great skills. I mean, MBA is one of those first degrees, like the primary degree, in my opinion, for doing that and starting businesses. Um, so the thing about that is, I thought that it was a little too generalized. You know, I wanted something more healthcare. Like, I'm not gonna be, like, business is great and certainly it can apply to a lot of different fields, but I I wanted something that's a little bit more healthcare. You know, at least be not not super broad, where it's just like manage any business. I want to manage like a uh, a restaurant or something. No, I don't want to do something like that. I want something more healthcare. So then I looked at MHA, which is a master's in healthcare administration, and that to me was very interesting because you know healthcare administration it's like a business degree for healthcare, 
and I teach you about the healthcare, um, healthcare system, the reimbursement, the finance, managing people, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, hmm, this is probably the degree I should get. The problem was, I thought that it focused a little bit much, and again, I, I don't have an MHA, and I didn't do tons of research on it, but this is just how I feel. Uh, I feel as though it was a little bit too much on the hospital side. And I was like, hmm, well, what if I go outside a hospital? Or maybe if I do want to start a business or like what? I, I, I didn't feel as though it captured in essence like what I wanted to do. Um, so that leads me to a MPH. And I, I, I guess I'll quickly touch on an MHI real quick, which I don't think many uh, schools offer. Um, but if you do have an MHI, which is a master's in healthcare informatics, I think, uh, something like that. But some, it's basically informatics masters. And I thought about that. I wanted to do that because I remember seeing a informatics pharmacist with one. But I was like, you know, that is really pigeonholing myself. And I didn't want to just be all about informatics, you know. And I already have an informatics uh, residency, so I didn't want that to define me either. That's why I didn't pick MHI. MPH. Before I start about MPH and tell you why I chose it, well, I think that was actually another question. Uh, let me look at that real quick. Uh, that was actually another question uh, by many other folks, but uh, one of the comments was like by Khalid, and he said, you know, what about a master's in public health after pharmacy? And a lot of people ask me, like, you know, why? Why did you pursue? Uh, why did you decide to do an MPH? You know, what what made you do it? I'm not gonna list everyone here, but that was like the essence uh, of the question where uh, everyone asks, like, why did you decide to do a master's in public health? So I'll tell you a couple reasons. In short, and this is probably the millennial in me thinking, I'm like, all right, I'm a millennial. I feel as though I can change the world. I truly believe that. Um, it's wired into me. You know, I'm a, I'm a millennial. So. I feel as though I was put on this earth to do something bigger than myself. And I believe that. I truly believe that. And I think one of the things, I saw a really cool tagline one time for an MPH degree. And it's like, if do you want to change the world? Uh, if so, there's a degree for that. And it's like, the MPH is that degree. Uh, you know, Hopkins' slogan, uh, their, their motto or slogan for their public health program is like, saving lives millions at a time and you know that that kind of stuff like resonates with me i'm like it direct patient care is great to be there at the bedside taking care of one patient at a time is just one patient at a time you know we go into healthcare because you know a lot of us want to help others and for me right now it's always been um it's it's been gradually changing it wasn't like this before but I've gradually changed to where I want to take care of one patient to I want to impact a lot of people at once. I want to be able to help a lot of people at once. And that leads to like population health, which is in the essence uh, what the MPH program teaches you to do. And so that's a big thing for me. Uh, I've, so number one, that the big thing is that I feel as though I want to make an impact. I want to make an impact that impacts a lot of people at once. So that's one reason. Um, Another reason is that I, um, oh, there's like an unspoken rule or spoken rule, it doesn't matter. What I've noticed is that a master's degree of any kind, does not matter, MBA, MHA, MHI, MPH, a master's degree is like almost like that thing you need to move up to like a, probably not a supervisor, maybe a supervisor, but more of the managerial type roles. Pharmacy manager, pharmacy director, C-suite, CPO, chief pharmacy, uh, chief pharmacy officer, things like that. Almost like you need a master's to get into that field. And the first time I came across this, I'm not gonna name the hospital, but it was a hospital in, far in Florida where I remember talking to some of the folks and there was like a, a pharmacist that was already in a leadership position and she was like being groomed to be the, the CPO of the hospital. And you know, I was talking to some of the pharmacists and the pharmacists were like, well, I was asking, I was like, you know, she's practically in that role right now. Why is she not? And they're like, well, you know, it's kind of like that, that thing where she just needs an MHA. 
that's all she needs. She needs an MHA to move up. They want to see her with the MHA to be able to move up the ranks. So uh, she was actually pursuing her MHA at that time. So that was the first idea. Uh, this is years ago too. And I was like, hmm, that's an interesting thing. I never knew that. And over the years that I've been practicing, that's what I've noticed as well is that people in those manager, director type roles or leadership type roles typically have a master's of some kind. Uh, so that's the second thing. And then the third thing is like, I'm, I'm like a career learner, I, a career student. I, I like to learn. And there's a lot of things that I feel as though I'm lacking. Uh, there's a lot of things that I can learn. The MPH program, especially Hopkins, I think if, if, I, if Hopkins wasn't a choice, I'm not sure if I would have pursued other MPH programs because Hopkins is super awesome and super flexible. There's 80 credits. Uh, which is twice as much as the most other programs out there, which are 40. But 40 credits for Hopkins, you got is basically your core curriculum where you learn about like biostatistics, epidemiology, public health. I can't remember the other ones, but you do that, and then your 40 credits is kind of like um, electives. And there's a lot of things that I feel that I can work on. Um, so there are things that I'm already experienced with, but you know. Things change. Uh, you can always reinforce. You, you gotta. You learn things. You know. I, I. I enjoy learning. I'm a career student. So the three things that I want to work on from the MPH is like healthcare leadership and management, infectious disease, and uh, public health informatics. I think that an MPH program for me teach me how to design tools and interventions that will apply to the public as a whole. You know. I want to be able to improve health. You know, as a whole. So I think a public health program does that for you. The other thing is like leadership uh, and management. You know, we there, there are a lot of things we can do as informatics pharmacists, develop tools. There's a lot of things we can, uh, you know, build tools that help clinicians. There's a lot of things we can do as a practicing pharmacist. We can take care of the patient, we can know the literature, we can do that. All of that is confined by law, regulation. There are certain things you can't do. And there are certain things you can do. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, MPH program also teaches you about policy. Um, public health, a lot of it is about policy. Why did we get into like, um, you know, implementing electronic health systems all over the U.S. Law, <laughs> you know, there was like the meaningful use program. It pushed the uh, implementation of EHRs all over the nation. Policy. You know, those are things that I, that's definitely an area that I am not very familiar with. Public policy, pa uh, Masters of Public Health teaches you to do that because you're impacting populations. So that's another thing that I want to learn. Then there's also like public health informatics. So aside from developing tools for your hospital or your health system, you develop tools that really impact the world. Um, that's the millennial me speaking, it's, <laughs> it's the world. The, the tools like data standards, knowing data standards, knowing how to implement data standards, you know, there, yes, there's a lot of experience you gain from residency, from reading and all that stuff, but I don't know, they, I think that, you know, in a public health informatics program, um, it really goes further and digs deeper into the theory, the fundamentals and things like that. Alright guys, uh, that's going to kind of wrap it up for this video. That probably answered a lot of other questions out there. I know that there's uh, why I'm doing an MPH program has been on the minds of a lot of folks. So hopefully that gives some clarity. Otherwise, feel free to ask me more questions or comments, feedback. Like, hit subscribe, whatever it may be. Until next time guys. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, guys.